Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order. If everyone can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and one change for tonight. After we do the pledge, if everybody can stay standing, we're going to do a moment of silence in memory of Robin Lewis. Thank you, everyone. So the first item on our agenda tonight is the oath of office, which will be administered by Vice President Byrd. Um, but I do want to thank uh, Robin's family, who is also here tonight um, and representing her. Um, I think I can speak for everybody on the board. We miss her, and we know um, just I want you all to know how we were all looking forward to working with her. So thank you for being here tonight. So this evening, being the first meeting of the calendar year, is our organizational meeting for the board. So the next item on our agenda is election of the officers. Um, the first office for us to vote on is the office of president. Do we have any nominations? I, oh, no, please. You, you were about to say it. I move we nominate Molly Palvarento for the office of president. Is there support for that nomination? Support. All right, thank you. Um, do we have any further nominations? Then I will entertain a motion to close nominations. I move we close nominations. Do we have a second? I second. All right, thank you. So uh, all in favor of the motion to close nominations, please say aye. 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 All right. So all those in favor of myself serving and this year as president, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you all for your continued trust in filling this role. The next office is vice president. Do we have any nominations for this office? I'll nominate Greg Byrd for vice president. Thank you very much. Do we have a second for the nomination? I'll second. Okay. Any further nominations? Right. Would anybody care to motion that we close nominations? I motion. Thank you, Kareen. And do we have a second for closing the nominations? I'll second. All right. So all in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All in favor of Trustee Greg Bird serving in the role of Vice President for 2023, please say aye. 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 Right. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Bird, for Thank continuing you. to serve in this role. Next is the Office of Secretary. Do we have any nominations for the Office of Secretary? 
You know, everybody feels like they talk too much to the assembly process. <laughs> I will now nominate Tammy Wheeler for secretary. Thank you very much. Do we have support for this nomination? I second. Thank you, Ms. Del Castillo. Are there any further nominations for the role of secretary? All right. So do we have a motion to close nominations for this position? I move we close nominations. All right. Thank you, Mr. Byrd. And a second? Thank you. All those in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 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 All right. All those in favor of Mrs. Wheeler serving as secretary for this year, please say aye. 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 Thank you, and thank you for your willingness to continue to serve in that role on the board. And finally, we have treasurer. Do I have a nomination for the role of treasurer? I nominate uh, Tracy Collins for the role of treasurer. Thank you. Do we have a second? Uh, for second. Thank you. Do we have any further nominations? All right. Do I have a nomination to close or a motion to close the nominations? So moved. All right. Thank you. And support. Thank you very much. All in favor of closing the nominations for the Office of Treasurer, please say aye. 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 All right. And all in favor of Mrs. Collins serving as treasurer for this next calendar year, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So all of the offices have been filled. I, again, appreciate all who are willing to serve in these roles um, for this calendar year. So I now will turn it over to Superintendent Cook for his report. Thank you, President Pulverento, and uh, congratulations to all the newly elected officers. Um, so January has been declared uh, School Board Recognition Month. So as you notice in front of me, we have a little treat. Thank you, Michelle, for taking care of this for all of our new, uh, newly elected board members and current sitting board members. So thank you for all the work that you do. Um, I just really appreciate all your support and uh, community appreciates your support also. So, and then secondly, uh, I do have one personnel recommendation to bring forward. Jonathan Fletcher is being recommended for hire as a special ed resource teacher at Raleigh Elementary. Uh, he has a BA in special education uh, from MSU, uh, and he was previously employed with the Follower Community Schools as a secondary special ed teacher. And uh, he's actually a ha former Hazlitt grad, so we're really excited to have John um, as a part of our staff. And then uh, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention. First of all, uh, we still do have COVID-19 test kits if uh, families would like to have those. They're available in all of our offices uh, for no charge. So um, feel free to stop by the office or you can come to this office. We also have them here. Um, we've had questions about it. are they still available? So we do, do still have those, have those available. And then um, lastly, uh, we had some news about the MLK celebration that's uh, taking place on Monday. Uh, at the Civic Center, so I'm going to let uh, sup our Associate Superintendent Limbert talk a little about our um, celebration. So this is a nice, um, this is a very nice report about Hazlitt. Um, every year, the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Commission of Mid Michigan sponsors an essay contest for sixth through eighth students. And the other thing that they do is they sponsor a contest for scholarships for um, 11th graders. On Friday, we were notified that Hazlitt Middle School swept the sixth through eighth grade essay contest. And we actually have three winners who took first prize, second prize, third prize. Those students are Addison Schroeder. She is an eighth grader. She um, took first place. Gabriella Lehman, eighth grader. She took second place. And Jack Bingle, eighth grader, took third place. On Monday, these students will be honored. There is a luncheon down at the Lansing Civic Center that begins at 11. And then they um, will have speakers and such. And um, the students and their families have been invited. Each um, student can take their two, of their, their two parents. And then um, we have a table. Hazlitt Public Schools will have a table. We have um, Diane Newman going, Paula, um, and then two of the teachers. All three of these students were from Mr. Newcomb's class at the middle school. So we're really excited for the um, students. We're hoping to bring them to the next board meeting um, so we can recognize that achievement. So <clears throat> I am trying to get um, some extra tickets. I know I do have at least one ticket, um, possibly another one, two total for, we'd like, uh, if there's school board members that would like to go, you could let Steve or I know. 
but well, that's my report. Yeah, so congratulations to the students yeah. and their families. Um, and thanks to Mr. Newcomb for all his support so, mm -hmm. um, and guiding the students. So uh, that concludes my report. Any questions? Okay. Thank you both for the, the good news and the report. So we have two discussion items this evening. The first is an out-of-state field trip request for the high school advanced art, advanced ceramic students to go to the Chicago Art Institute. So we'll welcome Ms. Fletcher to the podium if she's here. Hello. Um, thank you for having us. I'm Kaylee Fletcher. For those of you who don't know me, I am the um, art teacher at Hazlitt High School, one of the. And then I don't know. If uh, I'm Matt teachers. McDonald. I teach at the high school and at the middle school. Art. Yeah. So we're here today seeking approval for our out of state um, art field trip to the Chicago Art Institute. Um, prior to COVID, this was starting to become. Um, somewhat of an annual tradition that the students look forward to um, so much. Um, it's just a way to expand their knowledge, you know, outside of the classroom, make really strong connections to the content. Um, you know, you can learn about Monet and see Monet up on the board, but when you actually get to stand in front of a Monet painting, it's a completely different experience. So um, it's really awesome. Not all students get the chance to go to a museum um, in their lifetime. And um, I personally know that I still remember art field trips from when I went to school when I was in Hazlitt. So um, when you talk to students about their most memorable experiences throughout, you know, K-12 or high school, that more often than not, they involve some sort of um, off-campus lear learning opportunity. So um, we would love to give students that opportunity to do that. Um, I don't know if you have... Anything else that you want to add? Well, I would piggyback on the idea that it builds memories because as a Hazlitt grad when I was here in the mid-90s, uh, our field trips consisted of trips to Kresge. So to see the amount of work that Mrs. Fletcher puts in to uh, ensure quality trip to Chicago that's fun and safe, it, it's really nice to see and be a part of. So. so any questions from board members? One. Well, two actually. Um, how many students do you anticipate going? Um, the bus holds, I believe, it's like 50. So it's usually about 35-ish students, and then we have a handful of chaperones. Okay. And is there any financial assistance available if students um, have a hardship? So, um, oh, I thought I did that. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we do have some um, like former Hazlitt teachers who have reached out to me and they have told me art teachers, former art teachers that I know who have said, let me know if there's a student who needs assistance. So it's really just connections that I have personally um, that we do that. Is this a day trip or an overnight trip? It's a day trip. So we leave, yeah, first thing 7 a.m. and then we're back. It's usually about 10 p.m. in the evening. So thank you. Are there enough art students to potentially fill the bus? I know in the past, did French students also go? Yeah, so I think the French students, um, somehow it tied into their curriculum and they would kind of go with us. But yeah, I think between my advanced students and then I have advanced drawing and painting and then Matt has advanced ceramic students, I think we're going to have enough students with that. Oh, absolutely. So. And so for the advanced students, are these usually junior, seniors? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. The second discussion item this evening is a recommendation from Mr. Casson to purchase wireless access points. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Yes, tonight I am here to recommend the purchase of 58 wireless access points uh, that would be put in place at Wilkeshire and Raleigh Elementary Schools. Um, these are now end-of-life um, access points, so they were end-of-sale about four years ago, November of 18, and then they support them for another five years beyond that. So this fall, in uh, uh, the fall of 
2023, these will no longer be supported by the manufacturer, which means we can't get technical support on them, we can't get software or firmware upgrades, which puts us at a security risk. These access points were purchased um, uh, six to eight years ago, we, we purchased them over about a three-year period. This is when we were first starting to put wireless access points in place. So why just uh, Raleigh and Wilkshire, you may ask? Uh, all three elementary schools have a combination of uh, two different model uh, wireless access points. It's from the Aruba manufacturer, and they've got 205 and 305 models. And it's the 205s that are end of life that we are replacing, that we're recommending to, to be replaced. Uh, the 305s were purchased later than that. Uh, they actually stopped selling those about a year ago, but those will continue to be supported until 2026. So we have a few more years on those. Uh, this would be part of our uh, replacement plan for infrastructure equipment that we're funding through the sinking fund. Um, we're also applying for E-rate discounts on this. And because of the, the cost of the access points and the E-rate discount, we did issue an RFP back in the middle of November. Those bids were due December 15th. We had five uh, vendors respond to the RFP, and I'm recommending that we award this bid to the low bidder C high computer products out of Rochester for their, um, their bid of $48,771. Um, just a note, you do have the um, uh, summary sheet, I believe, in your board notes of uh, the four other vendors. Again, C High was the low vendor. Uh, we are asking for the access point, uh, some licensing, the mounting equipment, and installation. Two of our vendors uh, who responded did not um, include the installation in uh, Surprisingly, they were actually the two highest bidders. Uh, there was another bidder, a bidder who bid uh, a different manufacturer's equipment. They did not bid Aruba equipment. Um, so we would not have an interest in going with that product. But there again, the C High bid was the lowest bid. So I did mention uh, this is eligible for E-rate discounts. Um, the interesting thing about this is the access point, the mounts, and the installation services are all eligible for a discount but the, the licenses that we need uh, to go with these access points are not eligible for discounts. So I will apply for E-rate funding um, when the window opens on January 18th. Uh, we would be eligible for a 50% discount. I do anticipate being um, awarded that discount. It's, it's, it's not like a grant where there's limited funds as long as we fill out the appropriate paperwork. Uh, we would get the 50% discount on those eligible items. So as I mentioned, the licenses are not uh, eligible, so we would be responsible for the full $9,600 for the licensing. But we would get the 50% discount on the other parts, which total $39,000, so 50% of that, plus the, the $9,600 for the licensing. Uh, I would anticipate our cost being $29,199.50. I am asking for approval of the entire bid, the 48771 just in case we do not get the funding. Again, I, I fully anticipate, I don't have any reason to believe we won't get the discount from E-rate, uh, but we do need to replace these access points regardless. As I said, they're going end of support in the fall, and so uh, we do need to... to um, replace them. So again, my recommendation is that you approve the full price, the 48771 I would anticipate hearing sometime in April or May whether we got the funding. Uh, I, again, fully anticipate that. And then uh, our goal would be to purchase the access points and install them over the summer as long as we receive them by then. Again, uh, with all the supply chain issues, uh, especially for technology, uh, there are there tend to be long delays for technology equipment. But in my communications with the vendor, uh, at this point anyway, I expect having those in time where we can install them this summer. So that's my recommendation. This will be an action item at the next board meeting. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Jeff, could you remind us again what E-rate is, please? Yeah, the E-rate, it's, uh, it's through the USAC, the Universal Service um, administration something or another I can't remember the the acronym but it's federal funding uh, you know through the government and they collect that money you know, probably notice it on your telephone bills your your cable bills other communication bills down at the bottom they collect money from everybody in the country and that goes to schools and libraries for discounts on eligible technology pro um, products it's really meant to uh, expand um, access to the internet and so it really they fund infrastructure 
Um, they also fund internet service. We apply for that every year and we get discount rates on our internet access as well. So yeah, federal funding for schools and libraries for technology. You're welcome. Jeff, do you anticipate ordering um, that equipment uh, shortly after the board approves? I would order it immediately after, and I'll, in fact, be in communication with the vendor. I have talked to the vendor already about the possibility of them ordering that and, and having it in their warehouse. We want to get as much of a jump on this as possible, but I do feel that if we put the order in after uh, the January 23rd meeting, that that should give us enough lead time where we will have the equipment by summer. But yeah, that's exactly why I'm coming to you so early. Typically, I'd wait for the E-rate funding window to open, for the application to go through, and then come to the board for uh, uh, approval. But again, we're trying to do as much of this out front, as much out front as possible. Jeff, you mentioned this is for Ralia and for Wilkeshire. Are, are, oh. Do we not have any of these wireless access points that are end of life <clears throat> at Murphy, or are we just shifting we, some things You know, things we around? do, and I apologize. I meant to... Uh, um, talk that through a little bit. We do at each elementary school, half of them are the 205s, the other half are the 305s. We're pulling the 305s out of Murphy, excuse me, Ralia and Wilkeshire, and we're moving those to Murphy. And then these, uh, these are five, six, 615, 635s, I forget the exact model number. They're all going into Wilkeshire and, and Ralia. Yep. Any further questions for Mr. Casson? Yeah, Jeff, do they improve the speed? Of, um, it, you know what, it, it improves more the number of uh, devices that you can have connected simultaneously. And so it's, you know, from that regard, it would increase the speed because they can accommodate more devices simultaneously. So we would look to replace the access points uh, at Murphy uh, probably in two years. And uh, this, again, we do have a, a schedule of replacing access points, network switches, and of course our computers through Sinking Fund. So you, you'll get used to seeing me you know, each, each year about this time uh, making recommendations like this. Any further questions? Right. Thank, Thank you, very Mr. Much. Kasson. So the next item on our agenda is correspondence. Secretary Wheeler. Yes, we have had correspondence since the end of last year. Um, we heard from four um, Hazlitt High School seniors um, who wrote various school board members about uh, specific topics, um, proactive topics, as a part of a high school assignment. Uh, Lauren Wismant uh, wrote a letter regarding testing and assessment and the frequency. Audrey Ramsey is a high school senior who wrote about uh, the Hazlitt dance team and the issue of funding and uh, practice time and availability compared to other sports in our district. Uh, Jackson Wyndham wrote a letter regarding counseling support and the availability at our high school. And we heard from two students regarding uh, inappropriate racial comments that are overheard through the halls at school and in various situations and they wrote to raise awareness uh, for students and the community uh, regarding how this impacts and affects students and, and, the, and the community. And these students' names are Nathan Harnes and Ahmad Yaya. And we received a letter from Nicole, um, I'm sorry, Rin Herrick regarding the availability of menstrual products and um, when they are needed by students while they are at school. We also received a, an email from Nicole Shannon, who is the Vice President of Grand Ledge Public Schools, and she wrote to express her condolences for our loss of Robin Lewis and the family's loss, and how much she will be missed and how positive she has represented our community. And that is it for correspondence. So the next item is comments from the public. Um, at this time, any member of the public is welcome to come up to the podium and speak and address the board. Um, any individual wishing to speak has five minutes. Um, and again, topics or the comments are made to the board. So if anybody wishes to come up, the microphone is open. Hi.
Hi, Patty McPhee, um, Hazlitt resident, and um, on behalf of Robin's daughters and husband, I'm sorry for your loss. You. I'm sure she's safe in the Lord's hands. Amen. I only get to meet her a few times, and she's quite pleasant. Um, and on that note, it's sad, um, but I read all the way through the MCL Law 168.300 to 315. That's what you... Um, do the elections here and has it schools based on. Um, there's precedent set if somebody is deceased before an election, there's a process for that. And there's precedent set here if someone's an incumbent or a seated member on a board. Nothing that exactly pertains to this tragic situation. Um, I understand the process you guys are going through, and I will throw my name in the hat, and I hope I can be a great representative. Um, but I asked a faith friend of mine in my church who literally his job is to certify elections, and he could not find why you're doing the process that you're doing here and appointing somebody. So I um, We'll see how this plays out, and I I don't understand the process you're going through, and I don't find it legal. So, um, anyway, that's all I got to add on that. Good evening, everybody. My name is Roger Taylor. I lived in Hazlitt for about maybe. 13 years, but I've been in this area about 35. Well, this is uh, quite an honor to, to be here, and I also I feel that uh, it's a precarious situation, what I'm asking for, and uh, the bereavement that I feel now for this job opening is overwhelming to me. And I just don't want nobody to be railroaded through in this process. But I did put in a letter of interest for this uh, board opening. So I'll give you a little snippet of uh, what's going on in my life. Born in West Virginia, coal mine towns. Came up here when the automobile industry picked up. I was never a teacher, but I, I kind of looked at myself as somebody a teacher of life. So I've mentored a lot of special need kids. My daughter is in Cleveland. She's an autistic teacher. She's kind of helped me uh, figure out some of the kids that I've mentored. So it was a good process. So um, she finally said, uh, I mean, hopefully that we get a, a smile out of this. Dad, you got these kids, you put the fun in dysfunction. So, so anyhow, that's an old joke, so. Well, my first uh, greatest achievement was the fact that I raised a family as a father. And also, I had the spirit of a grandfather. I had two grandchildren, 10 years old. And I like to think that that's a good experience for me, so. Second was my education journey. Well, raising a family, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to go to school, so I did it at night. Uh, GM sent me to night school. I had two journeyman cards and skilled trades. Uh, I worked hard for those, for those journeyman cards. It uh, uh, helped me do what I have to do to get up in the GM at, uh, uh, ladder there. Uh, my kids got into sports, and they said, Dad, how can I be a better athlete? So I said, well, I guess I got to go to school and train for that. So I went to Eastern Michigan University and got involved with the athletic training. Had a beautiful time. Mentored a lot of sports from wrestling to baseball to uh, whatever, tennis too, too. So the, anyhow, lastly, I don't want to spin up here. I mean, I, I have a great humility here. My grandmother taught me, he said, hey, if you're talking about yourself, you're talking too much. So, <laughs> so anyhow, all I can say is I have a much love for kids, and I like to mentor kids that have special needs, helping them with ever, what needs they have from science 
to electricity to sports. I have much to give and I still have much to learn as a lifelong student with the philosophy of knowledge is power. And thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm Roger Lewis, Robin's husband, and I wanted to thank the board and the community for the love and support that my family has felt in my wife's passing. That means a lot, and I look forward to attending meetings from time to time and you seeing me and carrying the torch for Robin in the spirit of what she believed in and represented. So um, it's an honor to be here and uh, look forward to working with you. Thanks. My name is Brittany Catterick. Um, I was not planning on speaking, so sorry I don't have any proposed like speech or anything, but uh, I was a really good friend of Robin, and I just want to say that her loss is so great, and it has been such a great outpouring for her family and for the neighbors um, and for the whole community. But I really hope that whoever you appoint is someone that holds up her values. Um, I do honestly plan on putting my name in the ring because I help with her campaign, and she and I spoke before she ended up trying to serve because she wasn't sure if she was going to or not, and then we kind of goaded her into it, much to Roger's chagrin. Um, so, you know, I worked with her hand in hand, and I really just want to make sure whoever it is that you choose upholds her values because I think what she had to say and what she stood for was really important for our kids. Um, and having three Hazlitt children of my own in the school district, I really hope that they're supported and she's represented in that way. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Rachel Willis. It's my married name. Robin was my mom. Um, I was sniffling in the back, so I'm going to try not to cry because I'm, I'm actually not up here to talk about anything related to my mom, really. But um, having uh, serving on the Lansing School District Board of Education for the past 11 years, I know what it's like to be um, in this really hard position. And I followed in my mom's footsteps in the work that she did um, on Lansing School Board and was really looking forward to seeing what she could um, do here in Hazlitt. Um, all that being said is you guys are a wonderful group of individuals that I was really looking forward to having our family uh, be integrated into part of that, uh, that family as well. Um, and I'm always mindful as one uh, board member speaking to another um, elected body of staying in my lane. Um, but I would say that you guys are incredibly smart and know what you're doing. Um, so trust the oversight and the leadership that you receive from your clerk um, and MASB as far as following the decisions and know that you're making the right one. Um, and echo the sentiments about uh, uh, appointing someone who would um, fill that gap in that void that my mom was hoping to fill while being on this board. So thank you. Hello, I am Ramaya Lewis, Robin Lewis's youngest daughter. I would also like to say I'm not here to propose or anything. I am much, much too young to be on the board. <laughs> but I would also like to say thank you for all the support from not only my neighbors and my, fa and my other family, but also from you and everyone on the board. I would just like to say thank you for all the love and support and from everyone on the school board and beyond. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Carol Nicholas, and I was lucky enough to go to one of Robin's coffee hours. And she shared with us, you know, I just don't know if Hazlitt's ready for me. And it's like, oh, we're really ready for you. 
So I'm sorry we lost that beacon that we were going to have on this board. And I just want to emphasize again, I hope, I, I know all of you got to meet her, and I hope you can keep that in mind as you're choosing that next person to um, represent what she was going to represent for everyone. Thank you. public comment then and thank you for everybody who spoke this evening our next item is board reports so the first is the president's report um, an appointment of the 2023 board committee assignments um, so I would ask vice president bird to chair the policy and personnel committee in 2023 and ask uh, Kimmy Wheeler and Kareem Rosinski to join him on the policy and personnel committee for this year and then I would ask Treasurer Collins to chair the Finance Facilities Committee with Trustee Del Castillo joining, and we will ask our new member once appointed to complete that committee roster. Um, I'm also going to ask Vice President Byrd, Secretary Wheeler, and Treasurer Collins to form an ad hoc committee to review those letters of interest that we receive in the vacancy um, and to review those to select three to four individuals that we can interview two weeks from tonight. Um, and we will post all of those letters in a, a folder. Michelle is gonna create a folder for us so that all of the members of the board have a chance to look at them. If you have feedback or thoughts, please provide that to Vice President Byrd. He'll kind of lead the charge on that committee. Um, and I've also gonna ask that committee to review the interview questions that we will use two weeks from this evening. Um, and just as a reminder, those letters are due uh, to Michelle this Friday. Um, and we will have decisions and uh, invitations out to the finalists in the middle of next week so that there's plenty of time for people to make plans to be here two weeks from tonight. Um, and with that, I know next is policy and personnel and finance facilities committee meetings, but we have not had meetings since our last meeting, right. um, so we will go over those. And then next is the update around diversity, equity, and inclusion. So Superintendent uh, Thank Cook. you, President Paul Vrento. So, um, our application process for members of the DEI community uh, committee um, closed on uh, December 31st. And uh, according to Ms. Livingston, who's in charge of that process, we had 27 applicants. So uh, we're very excited about, um, I believe there's 15 openings um, between the, the various buckets that we're filling. So we're excited to, um, to be able to look at those applications. We are gonna be reviewing them on Thursday uh, and hopefully be sending out um, letters of acceptance uh, the following week and then hopefully be setting up our first meeting at the end of January or the first part of February, depending upon availability of the, of the committee itself. So um, kudos again to Mrs. Livingston um, for all the work that she's done to try to, to put this committee together and all the work that she's done um, leading our charge in terms of the DEI plan. So um, that's pretty much it. I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. I will just add, so we do have two positions on this committee representing the board. Um, I did speak with Superintendent Cook about waiting to make those appointments until after we've filled the vacancy on our board, just because that might be a really great opportunity for that individual as well. So we'll be making those appointments at an upcoming meeting. Any other questions? Okay. So the next is items from board members. So I'll open the floor to any board member wanting to share any item I um, just kind of want to bring a, a, a few things up just because it's been a while since we've been here um, and sometimes when we have long breaks sometimes you know things that we've discussed um, sometimes don't get followed through on or there's a delay on that so I just kind of want to remind um, us that uh, prior to the break we had a discussion, if not at the committee meeting, also at the board meeting in regards to having our director of special ed uh, provide uh, some information and re or re basically review um, the, uh, the policy for the seclusion room that we have here in Hazlitt. Um, and so I just kind of want to, you know, keep that uh, uh, agenda item um, relevant and hopefully we'll be able to, um, to hear from him in the next uh, you know, a few board meetings. Also, I wondered about, I know that we had applied for a grant for, um, it was like a security guard. Um, and I wondered if uh, Mr. Jensen had any 
uh, information for us in regards to whether we got that grant or not, or if it's still in the works? We have not received notification uh, about the approval of the grant yet. Okay. Okay. We did apply for it, but we're still waiting. They said it was going to be sometime in January. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I was just curious if anything had come in during the break. And then um, the, uh, the last thing that I would like to um, uh, propose is for us to consider um, uh, an agenda item in the future to discuss uh, the structure of committees and committee, the times of when we meet. Currently, we have two committees. Um, and uh, the agenda items are the same agenda items for the two committees. Um, and um, there may be times when it might be worthwhile to meet as a committee of the whole as opposed to two different committees. And so I think um, I would like to have an agenda item in the future to have that discussion as a whole committee um, since we're currently meeting as two different committees. Um, so I'd like for us to... Uh, think about having that uh, discussion to talk about pros and cons of you know one or the other, and there are there are times when it's more appropriate to have one meeting as a committee of the whole as opposed to two meetings. So that's that's it for me. <laughs> Any other members with items that they want to share? To yes. Um, so one of the things that we get as board members is we get all of the. Um, newsletters from all of the schools. So my student, my kids are only in the middle school and high school, so in the past I've only gotten those newsletters, but we made a concerted effort this year to get information from all the buildings, um, so I enjoy reading the newsletters, and um, my kids went to Rallya, so it's interesting to, you know, hear what's going on at Murphy, but one of the things that caught my eye, um, and this is a congratulations to Murphy, because they were awarded as a 2023 reward school, meaning that they are in the top five percentile of all elementary schools in the state. That's a huge accomplishment, and I just wanted to recognize that publicly for the staff, for the students, faculty. It's a group effort, and I just would like to continue as a board to support those kinds of achievements for all of our students and all of our buildings, but I just wanted to take a moment to really recognize Murphy and that huge accomplishment. Um, it means that those schools are in the top 5% in the state, state of Michigan for MSTEP scores and their proficiency. So it is quite an honor for that to, to be happening in our schools. Um, so yes. Any other items that board members would like to share? Well, yeah, if we're talking about schools, and I, I, I was thinking of mentioning this in correspondence, but it was one of our weekly newsletters from Principal Aaron North regarding the Faces of Innocence displayed throughout the school. And this is an opportunity for the elementary students to explore and connect with these photos of, of people children from around the world. So that was a really lovely article to read and I just wanted to share that too. I just wanted to take a minute to thank uh, Robin's family and her friends for being here tonight. Um, I must say I only got to meet her briefly, um, but um, I know quite a number of people that that know her or have served with her in her various capacities. I know she was very active in the community. Um, and so I was really looking forward to serving for, with her. Um, so uh, very sorry, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that you'll be active with and, and hold us accountable and make sure that we're, <laughs> we are also upholding Robin's values. So. Uh, thank you again for being here and, and uh, look forward to seeing more of you. Any other items? OK. 
Okay. Um, so the next item on our agenda, we have one action item this evening. Um, we need to appoint a representative to the Ingham Intermediate School District, um, Ingham School Officers Association to the executive board. Um, the ISOA typically meets on the first Wednesday of the month at the um, Intermediate School District from 7.30 to 9 a.m. The goal is to provide constructive assistance to school board members. It includes promoting governmental action of benefit to our students and schools, increasing interest and knowledge of schools among the residents in our community, developing effective and informed school board members, and encouraging collaboration and sharing resources among member schools. Um, and I know Secretary Wheeler has served in this role for a while, um, and we have appreciated her time, but I want to open it up to any nominations from other members who may be interested in serving in this role. Hmm? I, do you go ahead? I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Monica Del Castillo. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second for the nomination of Trustee Del Castillo? I will second. All right. Um, we don't have to quite go through the same steps of closing the nominations for this one as we do for our other positions. Um, but does anybody have any other nominations? Okay, all those in favor of Trustee Del Castillo serving as our representative to the ISOA for 2023, please say aye. 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 Right. Thank you for being willing to serve in this role. The next is our consent agenda. Um, we have four items on our consent agenda this evening. Uh, the first is approval of the minutes from our December 12th, uh, 2022 regular board meeting. Second is approval of the personnel recommendation made this evening by Superintendent Cook. Third is approval of the roofing project recommendation for this summer um, as made by Mr. Jen uh, Mr. Jensen in December. And fourth is delegation of board and secretary Board Secretary and Treasurer duties per board policy uh, 0154. Do any of the members need an item pulled from the consent agenda? And if not, if somebody wants to make a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move that we approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Treasurer Collins. Do I have a second? Thank you. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 All right. And then we have one announcement that our next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting will be held here January 23rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the boardroom of the administration building. The committee meetings, now that we have named the committee members, will be scheduled um, between the committee members and Superintendent Cook um, here in the next few days, I would assume. All right. And with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.